Well, first of all, oh, oh well. <laughs> it's a window, so I don't know what's going to happen. So, okay. Well, anyway. First of all, I want to say that I'm very happy to be here. Uh, one of the main reasons that I came to Cake Fest was to meet you all guys. Um, I enjoy the talks, but mostly I enjoy the time that we spend together. Uh, the beers, the dinners, the talks, and everything. Um, there's a reason why I'm so sleep deprived in the last five days. So just bear with me if I faint, just give me mouth to mouth and I'll be okay. <laughs> so let's get this thing started if it's not gonna crush on me. Okay, what I'm going to talk about is behaviors, okay? My name is Mariano Iglesias, as everyone knows. I'm an Argentinian, come from the south, southern part of um, South America. Um, I'm a founder and partner at Quicaba Technologies, which is my company. Um, I do cake PHP applications and other PHP work. I'm part of the cake PHP family for um, one year and six months. I'm an absolute PHP fanatic. This is why we, I'm here and I don't own a Mac. But I'm willing to take donations if you. <laughs> There's, just talk with Larry or Fiji, I'm all fine. Our schedule is going to be like, we're going to start talking about why we need behaviors. We're going to get into the 1.1 world and then switch to the 1.2 world. We're going to start talking about the purpose of models, why, why we have models in KPH in the first place. We're then going to talk about how to optimize our models and keep them a little bit shorter, um, nicer than they actually are. Then we're going to get into behaviors and we're going to see some of the behaviors that are around. After that, we're going to talk about how behaviors actually work. We're going to get inside behaviors and analyze a little bit of the code to see what they're all about. And finally, we're going to build a behavior. Okay. The purpose of most in case PHP is to encapsulate business logic. Sometimes it's confusing um, to people, the MVC concept, because they, they just think that there are three different entities, but they don't actually put um, a familiar concept behind each entity. In particular, models are supposed to encapsulate business logic in the sense that a user's table is, is not just a user's table. It represents a user on our application. So the model should represent the state of a user in an application. The more, model do, um, the more models do, the less controllers have to. The idea here is that if we start having code that should belong on a model on the business side of the application, but we're putting on a control, we're doing something wrong. The truth is that the more models have that particular business logic code, the less controllers are going to be crowded with code that shouldn't be there in the first place. Like I say, um, there are business logic representation of our application, so they are not necessarily a representation of a database table. Um, Nate mentioned the possibility to um, customize the data source API, so there's no reason why a model shouldn't actually modelize something different than a database table. They keep our code more manageable and readable. Um, as, as we go through the presentation, I'm going to keep going back to the concept that there's, um, there's, there are different ways of coding models. Um, there are, there's the nice way, the good way, and the acceptable way. What we're going to see is that as long as we actually start optimizing model, our, our application is actually gonna be more readable and it's going to be more maintainable. In order to do that, there's a, um, an approach, as it says, the skinny controls fat models approach. The idea here behind this approach is that you should take as much of the business logic code that you have on your controllers and switch it over to the models. The idea here is that to actually leave the controller the responsibility which uh, the controller has, which is controlling the workflow of the application. And the behavior and the model should actually do what they do, what they supposed to be doing, which is dealing with the business logic. Let's see an example. Um, I don't know if everyone is familiar with the fine call here, which is the 1.2 uh, fine call, the, the format. Here we got what a lot of people do on controllers. They would execute a fine operation, you know, 
setting up some condition and then, in this case, looping through the, through the result to build something different. And they would put this on the controller side. It works. It's going to get the job done, but the truth is, this looks much better. If we set up a method on the, on the model side, which actually tells us what we are trying to get, which in this case would be the last, comment, the last um, comments that, are, uh, that have been committed on, on the last one day, it's, uh, it's going to actually talk to us. This is much more explainable that if we go to a control and we find this fine operation and we have to go through the conditions to actually know what we're getting. But at the same time, we deal with the problem that the more code that we bring into the models, the more they tend to get a little more um, heavy on the code side. So we need, we need to start um, to keep things dry, to not repeat ourselves. So we need to watch out in order not to duplicate code between different models just for the sake of bringing more code to the models and leaving the, the controllers with less business logic code. So the first thing that on the 1.1 world would, we would do we will actually take our methods, try to generalize them so they would be useful for other models and bring into the app model. In that case, we would be extending the, the possibility to have different models utilize this method. But the problem with this is that there are some methods that shouldn't be applicable or applicable to every model. So what's the solution in the 1.1 world? Well, you, you could probably extend a model from a model and make your own models extend that and bring those methods to that particular class that you're extending. In that case, okay, it's a fine solution. But what happens when we start building different classes that are packaging methods that are common to certain models and we need one particular model to extend two or more, more of those classes, the more in trouble. That's why behaviors came into KPH 1.2. The idea about behaviors is to actually bring some of that reusable model logic and put it in a place where it should belong. They're gonna help us put our models to diet. Instead of having just the skinny control fat model approach, we're gonna have the skinny control chubby models agile behaviors approach. The concept behind this um, is to take some of that crowded uh, model code and put it in a behavior that could be shared up, um, across different models. And they're gonna help us make our code more variable and they're gonna solve the hierarchy problem that we just discussed. With behaviors, we have the possibility to attach the same behavior to different models. <clears throat> well, in this particular case, what I try to do is that, in my personal opinion, behaviors are um, one of the coolest 1.2 features because they're gonna help us make our code um, more readable but, and actually talk what they are doing. For instance, in this particular case, what I'm saying is if, myself, if I'm drunk enough, then I should start doing some actual refactoring. If I'm not drunk enough, then I should get more alcohol. This is much more readable than a fine operation followed by a, a loop operation and changing data. In my idea, it's the same concept as a mathem uh, the mathematical formula that I'm putting here, where a simple expression tells us a lot of things. So there are a lot of behaviors already out there. Some on the core, some on the bakery, some on different Google groups, messages. One of them is the ACO. <coughs> the, idea of, excuse me, the idea of the ACO behavior is to actually put, um, to let our, our models deal with the access request objects and access control objects database tables. Then there's Felix's containable and my bindable, which the idea there was to actually provide um, an intermediate solution until, as Nate said, that particular solution where we need to actually unbind models on the fly when we make calls to database, uh, to KPHP models, um, until that was in the course. So the solution, first, uh, Felix came up with container and I came up because of an evil thing with binary, that's the truth, so. The slug of behavior is about letting our models uh, generate automatic slugs so they can be used for search engine optimization or whatever. Um, on the particular case, the bakery uses this. So when you see on the bakery, the article slash uh, view slash 
name uh, dash article, that's the slug of behavior doing its job. The soft deletable behavior is about implementing soft deletion on KPHP models. We're actually going to use this behavior to um, see how behaviors are, are supposed to be built or could be built. The takeover behavior gives us the possibility to have any KPHP model um, linked with a tag table. So we can tag things like articles, like comments, stuff like that. The translate <coughs> behavior, which is part of the KPHP chorus, the ACO, is, is about providing internationalization to our models. We got, like Larry mentioned the other day, we got the static translation uh, that, that is handled with, by the KPHP core, but we also sometimes need to translate um, data that is on a database, on, on a KPHP model, and that's the, what the translate behavior is going to help us to actually achieve. The tree behavior gives us the possibility to represent data, uh, model data as a tree. The upload behavior is a generic way to actually handle upload, <coughs> um, upload of files and link them to a, a database table. But there are some other behaviors that are actually going to be built or are being built at the moment. In this particular case, I'm just going to mention the ones I'm working on. But there's also the version behavior that Jeff is working on. And I think you're going to speak about that. OK, OK. The searchable behavior um, came as a necessity that I had on a KPHP application that I built, which was about implementing MySQL full text search searching in KPHP. Um, I wanted to take that behavior and publish it, but I haven't published it yet because I'm thinking if I should also provide a way to actually index the data of different KPHP models instead of, instead of just relying on, on the full text indexes. The price of behavior also came as a, as a necessity of a real business application where I needed to provide um, end users in my KPHP model the possibility to uh, do money conversion of different money uh, amounts to different currencies, currency exchange rates. So I implemented the price of behavior that does exactly that. The rank of behavior allows us, it's going to allow us, because actually I haven't finished it yet, um, to rank any KPHP model. Rank in the sense that you can rate it from one star to five star and it will put in a ranking. The export of behavior is about having the possibility to take any KPHP model data and export it to different formats, such as XML, PDF, and other formats that I'm planning on incorporating. The comment of behavior allows us to attach comments to different KPHP models, such as articles, such as <coughs> stories, or anything of that sort. So the next step in our talk is actually to understand how behaviors work. Behaviors get attached to models in KPHP through the access model attribute. As we can see on this example, this is a simple model where we just got the name defined and the class definition. And all we're setting there is an access, uh, access attribute with the bindable behavior. This particular line of code is actually attaching a behavior to our model. But we can also send settings to the behavior if the behavior requires us to do so. We do so by indexing an array and setting each parameter uh, when we are actually attaching the behavior to the model. It's very simple, and as you can see, um, there's a reason why some behaviors end with the A, B, O, E expression, because if you read that code, what says that your model is acting as a bindable model, which actually speaks to you. So it's pretty simple notation that shouldn't take um, a long time to understand. But that, um, at the same, just 10 minutes ago, I was mentioning that the same behavior can be attached to different models. But in reality, in KPHP, there's just one instance of this behavior, which is going to influence our code. When we are actually calling the behavior, we're going to have to understand that fact and watch out for um, making sure that we are having the different options available for different models, but we are having just one instance of the behavior. Models can use several <coughs> behaviors. There's uh, there's no reason why a model should use just one behavior and actually we have that possibility. As we're going to see with different examples, you got the possibility to um, not only mix behaviors, but those behaviors can communic communicate to each other. Behaviors can also be specified at the, at the app model. Well, now what we want, uh, what 
why we would want to do that. There are some behaviors that could be applicable to all our models. One example could be the bindable behavior, where you want to have the possibility to actually restrict the information that a model is bringing you when you, when you execute a fine operation. So in that case, you don't really want to specify the behavior on each model. So um, I think it was four months ago that the possibility to actually define um, behaviors at the app model and merge them down to the model level got incorporated into the core. But this is fresh out of the oven, so I'm not going to have this possibility on the beta, but um, on the beta release of Cake PHP, but it is on the latest trunk version of the Cake PHP. Uh, recently, Nate incorporated these two functions that they, they serve a, the purpose that we were actually those who are using behaviors for a long time that we needed in the first uh, for a long time, which is the possibility to dynamically attach behaviors or remove them from the from a Cake PHP model. Up until these two functions, the only way that we could attach a behavior without hacking the core was to define them on the as, uh, act as attribute. Now we have the possibility to use the two, these two functions. But at the same time, they don't only serve this for the, the purpose of attaching behaviors on the flag. We can also change a behavior setting whenever we need it. We, I'm mentioning this because people who use the um, behaviors um, on Cake PHP 1.2 might have found this problem of not being able to change the settings of a behavior. So they kind of did, went different ways. Like some behaviors would offer different methods for people to actually change the settings. Well, now you've got the possibility to do it in a cleaner, um, cleaner way. Behaviors are about um, sharing business logic between models, right? That's what we say in the first place. At the same time, the behaviors give um, us a possibility to listen to the callbacks that cake PHP models have in the first place. For instance, the before find callback that gets executed, as pretty much everyone knows, before a fine operation can be extended at the behavior level. But if you remember, we said that behaviors are shared across different models. So there is a pattern that are going to be um, that is actually on every um, model in a behavior that you're going to see that the first parameter is always an instance to the model that is making the call uh, to this particular behavior method. In this case, the callback. The after find operation serves the same purpose of the after find in cake PHP models, actually all the behaviors of the same purpose. But what I'm doing here is listing the parameters in case nobody knows uh, what those parameters are. The before find is going to give us the query information, which uh, we're going to see in a little while how that's, that helps us to extend the new find or um, the new find syntax in Cake PHP 1.2 and gives us a lot of power in our behaviors. The owner is a, a, a callback that probably most people wouldn't know about because they're more more used to deal with the after saves, the before deletes, the after um, the after deletes, etc. But there's also the on error callback that will get executed every time a KPHP model is uh, producing an error, such as a bad query or something. Um, I haven't seen any behaviors yet taking advantage of this uh, particular callback, but it's there. But there, we also have the possibility to implement custom <coughs> methods on behaviors, which will get available to models. So there's no reason why a behavior actually will have to deal with callbacks of a cake PHP model. We can actually use behaviors to implement uh, custom business logic uh, methods that, that can be shared across different cake PHP models on our application. But as I said before, we can also use it to extend the new fine <coughs> syntax in cake PHP. This is, uh, I personally think this is one of the coolest features that you can do with a before fine callback, that you can actually take the power of the new fine syntax and take it to a level that you actually um, that you actually need. For instance, in, in the particular case of the bindable behavior, I, I let people do, use the, a particular method, method which is called restrict. So you can use restrict as the expect um, functionality in the cake PHP 1.1 version was available. But at the same time, we're also, I'm also letting people specify that particular information, the restrict, uh, the most that you're restricting with directly on the fine operation, which to me is much more readable. So let's 
get a little bit of more information about how to actually build behaviors. The first thing that we need to know is how to name them. Behaviors are named in the class name, as the example says, they, they should end up with the behavior um, sentence after the class name, and they should be placed in the models slash behavior slash your file name in underscore form dot PHP. So let's actually start seeing a simple behavior skeleton. There are two methods that I'm defining there, as you can see they're, they're not doing anything, but I'm putting them there for the purpose of actually explaining what they do, which are the sit up and the clean up. Once again, the cleanup got added recently, just a few weeks ago, because, um, because when the attach and detach methods got added. So I'm gonna explain it to you. The sit up um, method call gets executed on your behaviors every time your behavior gets attached to a model. The first parameter to the sit up is the model that is actually attaching the behavior. And the second parameter are the settings that we are sending the behavior, that the user is sending to the behavior, so we can act upon. The cleanup, call, um, the cleanup method gets executed whenever a, a behavior gets detached from a model using the detach method. Now don't expect the cleanup to be called um, as a destructor, it's just after a detach operation gets executed on that particular model instance. But at the same time, we said that behaviors can receive settings, right? So you would probably um, think about having your own variable and uh, storing the settings from the sit up in your own variable. But the truth is that the behavior, the model behavior, where, uh, from where every behavior extends, has a settings uh, property that is public and you should use because the, the attach code that we can use to actually change behavior settings uses these settings um, attribute in the class to actually make the change for you if your behavior got already instantiated for that particular model. The same way we have those sets up and clean up, let's see how to actually implement callbacks in behaviors. They get, again, as any behavior method that will get exposed to a the model, they should receive uh, um, the model instance in the, uh, as the first parameter. What I'm trying to do here on the first line is to show you that since the same behavior instance is going to be shared across different KQPHP models, we need to actually remember that when we're using model information. In this particular case, I'm trying to access the model data, so I'm accessing the model data using the model alias in the first place, because I wouldn't know what that particular model uh, is coming from. Models, the methods of the behavior that could be exposed to different models get, ex get implemented in the same way. You just put the method name that you want and you always receive the first parameter, the um, KTHV model instance. But at the same time, we may need to use other behaviors from our behaviors. This is pretty cool stuff because it lets you talk back to other behaviors. I think actually Jeff was doing a, um, the version behavior. He's, he needs to actually talk back to the tree behavior. So we were discussing the other day and I told him that you pretty much have different possibilities to actually use those behaviors. The first thing that you need to do is actually import the behavior class if it wasn't instantiated in that cake PHP model, or you can actually attach it to that particular cake PHP model. I'm also going to talk about in a little bit how to see the behaviors that are available on, our, uh, on a, cake, a particular cake PHP instance, so model instance, so we can see how to talk back to them. Let's go back a little bit to the fine syntax, the new fine syntax that I find so um, amusing. In this particular call, we're doing a final and setting a particular parameter. Now, this parameter is not going to be understood by KPHP core because it's not specified, but we can use it to do stuff on our particular KPHP uh, behavior. In this, in this case, we're seeing how to access this particular information. Any setting that you're setting to the new find syntax gets passed on to you to your before find callback, so you can use that to do whatever you, your behavior needs to be, do, uh, to be doing, like setting settings on the fly right before um, executing a fine operation. There's also another, um, another feature. That is, there are behaviors that some people don't know when they implement behaviors, and w I'm going to try to explain this uh, with an actual, actual practical example. Let's say that a behavior that we've got uh, we're trying to implement would save particular 
information to our KPHP model, such as, I don't know, a timestamp on a particular field. Okay, so what we would do, as we said, as we saw, we could implement the before save callback and add our data to the actual data that is going to be saved. But sometimes we forget that the particular developer may be using a white list of fields that should be saved. So we're going to end up with information that we specify from the cake PHP behavior that, are, that is not going to be saved after all in the database table because the developer is actually restricting the fields. So we need to tell cake PHP to add our own custom fields that we actually populate to the white list, uh, list of fields that should be saved, which we do through the add to white list call. In this particular case, I'm doing exactly what, what I just said. I'm specifying information that should be sent to, uh, to the save operation, so it gets saved on the model. I'm merging it back to the data that is currently being ready to save on the KPHP model, and then I'm sending KPHP to add my, in this case, three fields to the whitelist. I'm showing two calls, so you can see that you can specify the, the field name or just an array of fields. In this case, we're actually making sure that these fields that I'm specifying from my behavior get saved. There's also another feature of behaviors that most people don't know, and I think it's very, very powerful, which is the map <laughs> methods attribute. With the map, map, map methods attribute, we can do some of the magic method calls that KPHP has, like the find by file, uh, field name, whatever. So in this particular case, what I'm trying to achieve is that any method that follows the naming convention, my and four numbers, should get called on my cake PHP behavior. How do I do that now on a behavior? I specify the map methods uh, bar, um, class variable, and I use regular expressions to tell what the expression of the method name should be and what it should call when that expression gets, uh, gets found on, on a particular method call. On this case, as you can see, I'm specifying the expression here. There's no need to actually put the unders and the ignore case uh, operator of the regular expression, but I'm doing it to show you that you can add uh, uh, regular expression operators here. So what I'm doing is I'm specifying that the name of the method should start with a mine, then follow by four numbers, and whenever that method name gets uh, gets found on a KPHP model execution, that should call my, my method uh, in a behavior, which is pretty much very simple. Ah, and the second parameter to the, to the method, uh, the method that I'm specifying on this map methods attribute is going to be the method name that got called. So in the first two cases that I'm showing there, it would be my one, two, three, four, my 1978. I also mentioned that there's the possibility for your behaviors to talk to other behaviors. Now how you, and sometimes you actually need to know if there are some of some, your cake PHP model that, that are using, the cake PHP model that are using your behaviors actually got some behaviors linked to it, or attached to it. You do that through the behaviors attribute right now, through the behaviors class attribute. The behaviors class attribute is a simple array indexed by the behavior name and where the value is the instance of the class. And as we as we seen before, there's always the same instance. But I was um, I asked, actually asked Nate yesterday because he was eyeing a behavioral collection class that is empty at the moment on the trunk, and he said that he's probably going to change the array into that particular behavioral collection instance, so it's more easy to 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 actually navigate. So in this case, what I'm doing, um, I'm getting the model behaviors array. I'm getting the, in, uh, the array keys, which are the behavior names, and I'm going uh, through the Camelize function of the inflector class, so I, I know that it's going to start. Well, here I, I got the problem that if, if I uh, um, attach a behavior in starting with a lowercase letter, it's going to get instantiated, right? But it's going to get um, attached to the behavior's uh, attribute of the KPHP model using the same lowercase name of the behavior that I use. So, when in my behavior I want to see if that behavior got attached, I would have, need, I would have needed to know if it got attached using the first uh, lowercase or uppercase letter. So instead of actually having to worry about that, I got, just go through the Camelize. 
Again, this is probably going to change through the behavior correction, so it's probably going to be simplified. But in this case, I'm getting the behaviors, the list of behaviors that the particular model, model instance that is calling my before save callback uh, has, and I'm looking for a particular behavior. In this example, if I don't find that behavior, I'm throwing an error. This shows you the possibilities of making your behaviors need other behaviors and how you can actually check for that. I don't know if everyone been to the um, testing talk that Tim did. Um, I actually asked him if, if he was going to talk about fixture because I didn't know what the talk was about because I, I didn't know if I should incorporate the test part of the behaviors here. So I, the only thing that I did instead of going through the whole testing uh, models and, fi and using fixtures to sell test models that we would need on behaviors, I'm just going to show you a little bit the things that I think should be in your test case for your behaviors. Um, in this particular case, what I'm trying to show is that most probably your behaviors deal with data. If they deal with data, that means that our test cases are going to be needing uh, the, fixture, the fixture functionality of the test cases. So we're most probably going to need those fixtures. Right here, the thing that I've done was to extend the cake, cake test model, which is the model that uh, as when you, uh, if you saw Tim's presentation, you would have seen is that the way to actually make your model data use the test, um, the test database connection, so you use the fixtures. <coughs> I'm extending it to attach a particular model that I'm trying to test in my test case, which is the sluggable. But when we implement the test cases, we also need to remember that we may have different private or um, protected methods on our behaviors that we need to, to check for. So it's always important to not forget all the methods that our behavior is using to actually do the best test coverage that we can get. As I said, the idea here was to bring a little bit of um, practical reality to behavior. So I wanted to show you the soft deletable behavior, which may not be the best example, because actually if I look back at the code, I would change a lot of things there. But it's going to give us a, a first glimpse at how behaviors are built. So the the first thing that we need to do is to define the purpose of this behavior, which is to give you the possibility to, instead of hard deleting records, to soft deleting it. So when I call a delete on a cake PHP model, a field will get set instead of actually deleting the article. Once again, this is what we're using in the bakery, so we are never actually deleting articles. They just get thrown to a deleted uh, trash can. And the second thing that once we define the purpose of our behavior is going to, to be if we're actually going to be needing to define callbacks, to implement callbacks, some of the callbacks that we've seen. In the particular example of the soft, del soft deletable, the first thing that we know is that we need to actually implement the before deletable to make sure that CakePHP doesn't go ahead and delete the record, but instead we need to take care of it, set that field until CakePHP to stop trying to delete the record. We also need to implement the before find to make sure that if there's a normal before find operation, we don't let the user, um, we don't return those records that are marked as deleted. So it would actually work as if they were deleted hardly, but they're actually soft deleted. The before save operation, this is probably not as, um, as obvious as the first two, would need to get uh, implemented because when CakePHP is going to save your model data, the first thing that it's going to check is if your ID exists. And in order to do that, it's going to execute a fine operation on your model. And as you remember, the first thing that we did was um, implement the before fine callback so the soft deleted records wouldn't get returned, which would mean that if we don't do something about it, every time we're saving a deleted record, which we could be <coughs> saying, uh, saving on an administration panel, it, it would always create a new record because CakePHP is always going to think that the record doesn't exist. So we need to implement the before save and make sure that the behavior is not uh, doing what it's going to be doing on the final operation and telling it that to actually return, uh, return any kind of record, if it's soft deleted or not. The after save would be to actually restore that particular setting so we make sure that we, we're not harming the behavior on the model. We're also going to implement three, 
yeah. Oh, I got more, but just three behavior, um, three custom methods, <laughs> which could be hard delete to actually force a delete, the purge to actually delete all the records that got soft deleted, and the undelete to restore a delete record back to its normal state. I'm not going to show you all these methods, but this is the the the, the purpose of the soft delete. Or what we are going to see is the before, before delete and before find. So the first thing that we see is how the end developer will use our behavior. He will start by attaching the behavior to his models, in this case, the article model, and then he will use the operations. First thing that we are doing here is just doing a normal cakePHP delete on two IDs, and then we're executing a find. Since the behavior, the behavior also implements the before find callback, that would mean that those two article uh, with first ID and second ID wouldn't get returned. But if I wanted to return also delete records, I need to bring, uh, to give the developer the possibility to actually override the deleted field uh, condition. So there I can specify, okay, just give me back those articles that actually got soft deleted. In this particular case, we're undeleting a record and then we're just forging. This is, this is actually how, um, this is the main purpose of behaviors. If you see the code right here, it tells you everything that you need to know just by looking at those lines. You don't actually go, have to go and read through a, a lot of a bunch of code. But, so the behavior is actually fulfilling its, uh, its main purpose, which is cleaning up your code and making it more readable. So let's start seeing the implementation of the, of the first um, method, which is the setup. The setup as, we, as we've seen, gets called whenever a behavior gets attached to a model. And we've also seen that the same behavior instance gets shared across different models. So we need to watch out when we are storing the settings that that particular, attach, um, that particular model is sending us so we don't override our model's uh, data. So what I'm doing here is just putting in some default uh, settings, such as the, the field that is going to have the deleted attribute, the field date that is going to have the date, the days, uh, the timestamp that when the file, the, when the record got deleted, <coughs> and if we should override the find operation to not return the soft deleted uh, records, or if we should actually override the delete uh, operation so it will get soft deleted or hard deleted. Um, and as you can see here, I'm making sure that I merge my setting, settings back to the, to the settings attribute so I don't step on another cake PHP instance, another, I'm, I'm sorry, another behavior attachment uh, to another model. So we start with the before delete implementation. We said that the first thing that we need to see is if actually, for some reason, uh, the, the developer could have told our behavior to not act upon a particular model. Even if the model, for instance, if the article gets the soft deletable behavior attached, at some point we may need to tell it not to actually perform the soft deleted operations. We just want to override it. We do that using the settings that we've seen just right about now. So I'm right, I'm, the first thing that I'm checking is that the fields that should be there are there. So if they're not there, I'm just going to return true so CakePHP can resume the normal operation and, and, I, and I don't get in the middle of it. Then I'm just getting the settings here and making sure that I'm going to set a save operation. So instead of actually doing a delete, what I'm going to do is save, change a field value on the CakePHP model. And the other thing that I do is if the, if the option to, to, to store the day stamp the timestamp when the record got deleted is specified, I would also add that particular file value to the, to the data that I'm going to save. So I go ahead and I merge back my information to a save operation and I actually get, and I save that particular information specifying that only the, mo the, the fields that I'm touching should be saved. After I save that particular information, which is the deleted state, the state of, the, of the model that we're deleting, I'm returning false so CakePHP doesn't go ahead and delete the record. So we got our before delete callback and we're actually finished implementing the soft deletion of the record. So the next thing that we need to do is override the before find operation to make sure that when 
they are calling us, we are not returning the, the, the records that got deleted. I wanted to show this because sometimes um, when we implement behaviors, we forget that some people, that not us, but probably some people are going to use the query calls to uh, specify the conditions, and sometimes everyone just assumes that everyone uses the array-based conditions when they are doing a fine uh, operation, and some, some people may not. So um, I actually suffer this when I was doing the soft delete because um, some people would come back to me and say that it didn't work when they got string-based conditions, so I needed to just go back and change it. So here, the first thing that I do is I'm making sure that the fields that I'm using to specify the delete state are not included on the fine operation, because if they are included, then the developer is probably trying to get deleted records or non-deleted records, so I shouldn't intrude there. But if they are not included, I should, I should have my own conditions, so I make sure that the articles that got soft deleted wouldn't get returned from the fine operation. The, again, the period match there is just to make sure that I'm, uh, I'm handling those uh, string-based conditions, so I don't lose that possibility. I add then, if I'm, if I'm sure that I should be including my own settings to the fine operation, I add my own operation, which proves you that in your before-fine before fine implementation callbacks in the behavior, you can add more conditions or more information to the, to the fine and make it more powerful. Well, I'm, I'm actually not going to finish now. I'm going to show you um, the searchable behavior that I've got working, because I wanted to show a, a real implementation of a behavior, and you could see it working. Oh, that's not here. And you could see it working. I wanted to show the searchable behavior because, to me, that's one of the main things. Okay, this sounds like advertising. <coughs> the main thing the searchable behavior has, oh, it gave me a possibility to actually implement full text searching search searches. So the first thing that I'm going to do is show you the queries that get executed when I'm performing a search, and then I'm going to show you the behavior and, it, uh, and how it's implemented so we can skim through it. So I'm going to change the setting so we can see the queries that get executed when I perform a search. Lighting fast, right? <laughs> okay. That took some time. Okay, I got it. I'm going to go through the through the query so I can find where the full text gets done, which is here. If you see that query, I get the, the typical match against um, statements that full text search indexes are all about. So it's showing me that it's actually doing it on particular fields. If you see, I'm doing a match against particular fields of the project database table that on the project model. I'm uh, matching it against the expression that I just gave. It and if you look at it, you're going to probably find out. Um, figure out that the behavior is also attaching some expression, some operators to, to, the, uh, to the search expression, which gets done to me, uh, for me, automatically. Now, this is the model that I just queried, the detail model. In this case, a detail is attached to a project. And as you can see, I'm going to put this a little bit below. Just put this down so everyone can see it. I'm attaching the searchable behavior to this particular model, specifying which of the model fields are actually full text indexed by MSQL, MySQL. That's it. That's all I need to, that's actually all I need to do for a cake PHP model to be full text searchable. Once I've done that, let's see, we here now. Once I've done that, I have the power of full text search indexes for my cake PHP models, which, again, to me, is a perfect example why behaviors are one of the coolest 1.2 features that got added to cake PHP. Well, I got different options here, like 
uh, one of the problems with full text search indexes is that it doesn't work with um, low with low length words like less than three I think less than three or four characters it doesn't work so it, the behavior just kind of need to find out when it, it should be doing it with a match operation or, or, or it should be doing it like with a normal like SQL operation that's why I'm thinking of taking this behavior and giving you uh, both possibilities, the full text uh, searching and the actual implementation of a, our own index table where I can index the information of any mode that get the searchable behavior attached. So I got, well, the Boolean is just to specify if I want to use the Boolean uh, matching or the, I don't remember that one, the query expansion, I think, the option for full text search searching. Here you see that I, I'm exposing, as we said before, that uh, behaviors should not, uh, could not only implement callbacks of cake PHP model, but can, can also implement their own methods for those to extend the functionality of those models. In this particular case, um, and I'm going to explain why this happened. This particular case, I'm implementing the search count on the search. The reason why is that this particular application, the one that I used to show you the, the search of behavior, got actually implemented in cake PHP 1.1. So then I had to switch it over to cake PHP 1.2. So some of the behaviors didn't actually got clean because I just took code that I had at the app model level and I packaged it as a behavior to make it cleaner, but I didn't get time to actually clean the code. So in this case, I'm implementing two methods that I needed to use uh, for the pagination of 1.1. And I now just using it for the pagination of cake PHP 1.2. So. That's pretty much why I implemented the search count. The search would be available for your mode, so you can actually execute searches. Just in a little while, I'm going to show you how I'm calling the search, um, the search function of the behavior from my model. Everything gets done in the prepare. As you see, I just, this here and here, I'm just sending everything to the prepare private method that takes care of the whole thing, and then I just do the actual fine. Um, operation. I'm setting the, the, the prepare method gives me back the conditions, the fields, the order, everything that I need to send back to the fine operation. Again, another implementation could have been, I could have implemented the before fine operation and take uh, advantage of the new fine syntax and just look for a search option or something that would be uh, setting, launching the search operation. But in this case, I'm just using a a common uh, search method to do the actual full text searching. All this is a little bit of the code. I don't think we need to go through that, but. Oh. I'm, oh, I'm getting paranoid here, as you can see. Doing a lot of searches, so I make sure that what they're sending me is not going to harm my application. Oh, yeah. This is, this is where I do the actual, um, what I told you, that there are some length of the words that when I use it on a full text search expression, it's not going to work, so I have to decide if I should do a full text search or a like uh, expression search, and this is where I do it. If the whole expression of the search is less than these characters, I use the like operation. But if it's not, I should also go through each word that is available on the search expression and make sure that some of those words are not uh, less than the minimum amount that I require for a match operation. In that case, if I, I do find some of those words being smaller, just put them in an array so I can make sure to mix the like operation and the match operation at the same time. And then I make sure to, oh yeah, that was it, to the uh, proper matching mode. If it's Boolean mode or query expansion, I'm not going to go through the full text in the theory behind it, but does make sense, it does work. And this is where I'm doing, I'm saying everything. Here I'm sending the order, so they also get ordered by the actual um, <coughs> relevance of the search. So the higher the relevance, the first the rows. I'm going to release this behavior once I decide if I should clean it and should that also a possibility. And so the other behaviors that I listed, it's probably the let me go back to that list. There we go. I'm probably going to release the 
searchable behavior first and the exportable next, because I'm using the exportable quite a bit. I don't have it here, I have it on our application, I forgot to bring it, but I'm using the exportable behavior quite a bit, and I think it has a lot, of, a lot of power. Anyway, the whole point of the, of the, of the talk was to actually give you um, a possibility to see why, for me, in my particular opinion, KPHP behaviors are one of the coolest things, because it gives us a lot of readable code. So I didn't want to go through um, the actual heavy coding and testing in life, but I'm willing to spend some time if any one of you needs actually a little bit of guidance to just code together or something. Anyway, that's it. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah, you. Okay. <laughs> um, I couldn't tell by your code from this far away, but that searchable behavior. Yeah. Is that, like, for instance, MySQL has a keyword search. Is it, is, is it using that? Oh, you, it's, it's using full text search indexes, which is a MySQL feature. Okay. Uh, what you specify as a full text index, particular fields, and they get indexed by MySQL, and you can run these match, um, match queries. Um, the reason for why you've got full text search indexing because it lets you find uh, uh, um, expressions, you know, streams, find operation, find expressions like I don't know something that begins with a a and and you put a star to it, so it's a, an actual expression of a search operation, and it gets done much more quickly than a like operation, and you can actually sort it by relevance and and, and make sure you get the ratio of the relevance of the of the search and. So it's a normal MySQL um, feature. I, I don't think it's available on other, I'm, I'm not sure if it's available on, on Oracle, but I don't know. PC, no, it's not, right? Yeah, but it only works on the MySQL. Yeah, yeah, it, it only, I'm sorry, it only works on, yeah, you, you, yeah. I, and you actually, I got, I got this issue when I was implementing it. Uh, I actually used full text indexes on other applications before I was using CakePHP. But when I did this, um, I spent like, three days trying to understand why join wasn't working was because um, I was doing a join across databases and I had some information as my, my, my sum and the other uh, database was inodb and they got um, foreign keys pointing to each other so that gives you a whole, I mean if you're, if you're going to use full text uh, search indexing you need to make your database my sum and make sure that if you're pointing another table they should also be my sum. So, yeah. Yeah, Dennis. Um, if you have a model that has both, uh, say, a before find and a behavior before yeah. find, uh, what order are they executed? Uh, behaviors first and then model. I, is that right, Nate? Behaviors? Oh, he's not listening. Behaviors first and then uh, the model. Yeah. Hit, hit. Yeah, okay. And if you have Multiple behaviors, can you know what order they're going to Oh, they, they, oh, that's a good question, because they get out and, and they, it's navigating the array of behaviors right now. So right now, the answer would be they get called on the order they got attached to a model. But in the future, with the behavior collection class, it may be different, I don't know. So in the, um, in the access array, where you specify the behaviors that are attached to your model, the order that you specify them is it's, it's going to be the order that get called. Yeah. I don't know if it's, is that going to be the same with the behavior collection class? Is it? Yeah, uh, yes. Okay. Um, they'll be managed in a slightly different way so that you'll be able to change that. Ah, okay, okay, cool. Anyone else? Cool. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Mariano.